Good evening and welcome to the May 4th, 2021 Northern Lebanon School District Committee meeting. I call this meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you for joining us virtually this evening. Please know that all webinar community member participants will remain on mute during the meeting unless they have put in a request to speak during the public comment period. Those wishing to make public comment were asked to submit that request by four o'clock this evening via email or online form. Mrs. Martin, may I have a roll call, please? Yes. Gray? Here. Erdman? Here. Baller? Here. Marlowe? Here. Murray? Here. Klein? Here. Kellick? Here. Nam? Here. Bucks? Here. All members present. Thank you. The board met in executive session today, May 4th at six o'clock to discuss safety and security. And the board will meet immediately following this meeting to discuss confidential personnel information. This evening, we are going to swap item two with item three so that we can start off with our presentation by Crabtree, Rohrbaugh and Associates. And we have Scott Cousins to present to us this evening on our update on the building project. Thank you. Yeah, and so um, this is kind of our last update before we go out to bid. And um, so we wanted to touch base with you on some items, um, uh, just let you know where we're at and on the elementary project and the, um, and the athletic field project. Uh, Kirk, can you um, share, bring up the PowerPoint? You can go two slides in. So um, as I mentioned, we're kind of wrapping up and closing in on, on finalizing our design and details and, and finalizing our bidding documents. And we're gonna be releasing bids um, June 1st. Uh, the project will be out to bid for about a month. Uh, during that time, we still have opportunities to make some changes and adjustments through addendums um, that, will, that we can issue to the, to the bidders. So, so, um, but where um, land development approvals are anticipated in, um, in the May, June timeframe uh, to align with the uh, bid receipt. So next slide. Um, so one of the big updates that we wanted to go over was one of the um, items brought up actually by a board member last, last meeting was material price increases and kind of what's, what's the status of the current construction market and, and bid market. And, um, so I'm going to kind of talk through some items. Fidavia is also on the call, and they can they can kind of echo in along with um, um, Mr. Jones, Dave Jones, your your solicitor, who has some also insight. But um, you know we've kind of seen you know during COVID and kind of over the winter and the spring there was there was this lull in the construction industry. There really wasn't much bidding out there. Contractors were kind of running out of work to do, and 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 had a lot of availability. And so you saw this kind of um, um, kind of start to ramp up in the, in, in, this, in the winter and now where there is a lot of, uh, I, there's a lot of projects on the street and a lot of items bidding. However, there's still a lot of uh, availability in, there, in these contractors workloads. So we're still, even though there is a, a lot of projects bidding on the street and a lot of work out there, uh, we're still seeing good coverage in in these in these bids. So meaning, uh, there's a lot of prime contractors, multiple prime contractors bidding a job. There's multiple subcontractors bidding a job. So there's still kind of that hunger and desire to fill up some of their workload. However, as as we come out of the uh, the COVID world with some of um, the impact to uh, things that happen with um, demand and, and availability of some materials, we are seeing some significant material price increases. And you can see there listed in, you know, things like steel, copper, metals, woods. Um, and, and in addition, we're seeing some things we haven't seen in a very long time, which is, which is material availability becoming an issue, meaning, and we talked about that last meeting, that one of the things that we were keeping an eye on was uh, steel joys, what it, happen with just the demand in the in the warehousing industry uh, with with you know the boom in online online uh, online industries and shipping and things like that there is there's a, been a huge demand for um, steel joists in, in relationship to uh, warehouses so um, we kind of 
we're keeping an eye on that. And we thought we were still in good shape, but it seems like with every week that goes by, it gets, it gets worse and worse. And, you know, the last time we, we touched base with the contractor, the Joyce availability was if you order, put in the order now, you wouldn't get your Joyce until uh, middle of 2022. So we kind of made the decision as a team that we're going to have to kind of change our philosophy on how we uh, design the steel structure of the building and switch over from joists to beams. Now, um, just to make sure that we have the uh, the availability and to construct the building in, in the in the time frame allotted. Um, now, what that means is beams uh, are cost uh, are costing more than joists. Um, so that means just an increase in construction costs, and I'll go over that a little bit later. Um, so that was one of the things that we want to bring you abreast on, and the other one is kind of we is back to the material price increases. There's a, there's a lot of volatility in the market right now, just with things going up and down, but, but you know, what we're hearing across the board is not like this is a peak and we're going to see anything going down, you know, things might level off in the future, but, but, you know, these higher prices are kind of here to stay. So we, we got with Fidavia and our design team and kind of reanalyzed all of our individual prime, um, cost estimates, different prime contractor cost estimates, uh, and analyze some of our recent bid results and decided to make an adjustment uh, to some of those. And you'll see where we made those adjustments when we go over the cost estimate. Um, but, you know, I think the message is things are unpredictable right now, but we are um, trying to um, kind of hedge, hedge our bet and, and give you uh, avenues that should the cost come in higher than you're comfortable with, you have opportunities to uh, bring that cost back down. And um, those, are, those are through alternate. Can you go to the next slide? Scott, while we're going oh, to the next slide, slide, can you speak at all to about the, uh, I had a question about the joists versus the steel beams. In terms of durability and or, you know, any type of, uh, you know, safety in turn, you know, the, the, the construction of the building, um, is there any, difference between those two? I know right now there's some cost differences and availability differences, but in, in terms of the building itself, um, can you talk about any sure. pros or cons or whether or not that, that's a factor? Sure, good question. Um, essentially, our, our structural engineer is going to design the, uh, whether it's a beam or a joist, is going to design that to the same load. So from a safety durability standpoint, they're one and the same. Uh, what makes Joyce more attractive is when you have this many of them, if you think about it on, um, if you take it to a residential kind of framing method, um, you know, framing with dimension, regular lumber, two buys and things like that versus a, uh, you know, um, oriented strand beam or something else that's more economical. The joists are basically more economical because of how they're, how they're shaped structurally that allows you to uh, basically um, have the same load capacity with less steel. So when you get to a beam there, you end up with more tonnage of steel and that's, and that's your price increase. But other than that, there's no, there's no difference. Uh, constructability, you can still construct the building in the same amount of time. Uh, durability is, is once again the same. Any, so I mentioned, so of the two uh, areas that we're adjusting the construction cost are one is the, the cost of the beams and our structural engineer calculates that to be probably about in the neighborhood of $800,000 increase. Now, what I will say is that we are hearing from some of the general contractors are out there that with, with how, how much demand there are in Joyce, that Joyce are, the price of Joyce have approached the price of beams anyway. So, so I think it was an inevitable cost, even if Joyce were available, that we would have had to make that adjustment. Uh, the other adjustment is to in the plumbing and fire protection. I mentioned we kind of did that analysis of, of all the different primes and, and where, we, where we thought we were good versus where we thought we need, need to make an adjustment. The plumbing and fire protection, because they are so heavy on piping material and things like that, uh, we compared with some recent bid results and we felt an adjustment was need, needed to be made. So, um, so those two adjustments flush out to what you see down below. So adjusting the construction cost to 42 million and then the total project cost of 51.8. So if you go to the next slide. So I mentioned, you know, 
What we want to do, so as we get north of 50 million, we wanted to uh, kind of reevaluate the scope of work and see if there was any changes or adjustments that need to be made to try to get more closer to that $50 million range. And rather than you know just simply eliminate scope of work, we thought the best way to kind of hedge your bet, so to speak, was to build in these alternates. Um, the district is, and the administration has kind of done a, a really good job along the way of, of separating want versus need. So I think you already have kind of a lean, uh, a lean building approach where there's not a lot of extra fluff that's easy to take out. You know, the, throughout the whole process, they uh, the administration has been very good about, uh, you know, kind of saying, well, do we really need that? No, let's let's not incorporate that. Or yeah, that that's definitely a need. So so there's not too many things that we can look at, but there are some areas that that we are looking at. Um, so I'll start from the top here. And any questions along the way, please feel free to interrupt. So. Um, there's some areas from the piping material um, where, where we're going to allow an alternate bid to allow some different materials that aren't metal, so some PEX and, and CPVC and things like that. Uh, on the wiring side, for electrical side, allowing some, alu some aluminum wiring versus copper. Copper is another wire area where we've seen some significant price increases, so allowing some copper wire or aluminum wiring in certain areas. And once again, these will all be price um, uh, line items on the bid form that you'll be able to see the value of and make a decision based on the actual value. Um, looking at changing some of the exterior facade materials. So there's some materials that are more costly than others, maybe looking at incorporating some deduct alternates to uh, vary the facade. Um, there's some areas what I call bonus spaces that, that we've incorporated throughout the design. So if you think about the learning stair, the learning stair basically in the middle of the building goes from the first floor to the second floor. Um, and it's and so there's a space kind of under the rear section of that learning stair that's that's available space to and we created a small group instruction room there. That's in addition to what you uh, need from um, from an educational standpoint currently. So the thought is that you can forego that space uh, without sacrificing the educational program, but at the same time, it's very inexpensive space to build. So so that's another area. Uh, we, are, we, we already had the gymnasium platform uh, above the, um, the, the toilet rooms and the storage areas, that second floor viewing platform as an alternate. And then we have a, a small sensory room above another, stacked above another, um, one of the uh, reading nooks in the um, collaboration areas that was once again, a space that was easy to put a floor in. But once again, we can, we can see what that price would be and break it out as an alternate. Um, Looking at just the quantity of playground equipment, these are things that you can always, you know, put put a certain amount of playground equipment in now, and then further down the road, maybe the PTA buys some more playground equipment. So we have a we have a kind of grouping of playground equipment that we have as an alternate bid. Uh, roofing material, we have EPDM as our base bid, but certainly there's some other roofing materials out there like TPO and things like that that are once again none of these are meant to sacrifice. Uh, quality or longevity of the building. You actually have TPO on some of your elementary schools, but it's it's sometimes a less expensive roofing option. Um, the the classroom door side light shades. So we do have some shades on the side light doors that we typically don't do on elementary schools. So we'll see the price to, to provide those and whether you want to uh, select those or not. Um, and I mentioned um, going to all beams on the building. However, we are going to incorporate an alternate bid to provide joists for the roof area. So if we do get, get in a situation where there is a steel supplier that's able to provide joists in the time frame, they'll have the ability to provide that as an alternate bid and, and we, can, um, we can validate that they're able to provide that in the time frame, then we can take that, that credit. And then others to be determined. So we're still going through that list with Fidavia and with the administration to, to generate other items. But once again, this is meant to be kind of a way to hedge your bet. Um, you know, the, some of the good things you have going for you, it's a brand, it's a new building that's certainly more attractive to bidders out there that versus a renovation. Um, it's a larger project, so you have an economy of scale. So there are some good things going for it that might uh, benefit us and, and, and have better pricing than we anticipated. But, but I think the bottom line is it's a very unpredictable market right now. Um, Dan, or did you want to add anything? Or yeah, I was just going to chime in. I was just going to chime okay. in. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you brought up the whole scenario with the steel versus the joist. I think that makes very good sense to have that as an alternate, uh, just to show the cost differential between the two. 
uh, we are we we have went through this whole scope rescoping everything, and we're also continuing to do some value engineering with materials inside the pro inside the building itself, like the flooring, etc. So there is other items that we're going to be uh, looking at, and uh, we are. We're confident with the project. We're looking forward to this coming through. And we have been in communication with a number of contractors and they have all been sitting there just waiting for this to come out. Uh, even though there's a lot of work out there, uh, we reached out to a couple of contractors uh, just today and they went and responded, yes, we are waiting for this project to come out. Uh, so it's good, healthy, uh, economy out there for, say, for the contractors and say, I'm glad to see that this project has got a good of, lot of healthy motivation about it. <laughs> yeah, good evening everyone. Hope ever, everyone's doing well. It's Dan, just uh, I won't be redundant, just to add a few comments um, that haven't been said. I think costs are going to continue to go up. We've been following this pretty well since COVID began. And everything we see is that costs, I mean, COVID presents another, you know, uh, wrinkle iteration, something to adapt to every week, there's something else. And that's fine. That's how the world is. But in terms of predictability of cost over time, I, we only see costs going up. Um, having said that, I don't think James mentioned this. If I did, I apologize. We, we've, we've had projects regularly go out to bid and we've been able to work through every project that we've had on the book so far. Um, it looks like even including one, a, a fairly large project um, that came in bid yesterday, a complicated job, just a tiny bit south of you. And um, we were right, right under budget with it. So um, I think it just proves the point that a well-planned project and from everything what you're hearing from James and Scott and I've heard, you know, and Heather as well. This project has been giving a lot of attention and the connectivity between the professionals and the marketplace is critical. Contractors can be more selective today with the current state of affairs, but on the other hand, they're hungry for projects that are well-planned by people they trust. So, um, you know, on that note, if you know of any subcontractors, contractors, as James mentioned, we're already reaching out to them to get the excitement going. So feel free to pass that information along to us if anyone needs to, you know, need some information. But yeah, it sounds like the project is in really good hands and uh, yeah, excited about it. Hey, uh, before Dave has to go, Dave, would you, you want to chime in? Sure, thank you. Um, I think that the issue that came up the other evening was when I made a mention on the slow update of the increased costs, so on and so forth. And if there was a potential for delay of the project, it might be in your best interest. My goal was not to scare anybody, it suggests that they should not work on educational program projects that are critical to the, the mission. My goal was to say if you had a project that was not to take your educational project, they could be put for some reason, it might be a good time to do so. Um, the other reason I said what I said is because I want to have a reasonable location among our board and school district to just make them aware of what the market is. I, I believe that you're doing everything correctly. Scott and Crabtree are doing a good job. Dan and doing a good job from, from Favia. They're doing great hand. The other thing to keep in mind is, is that money is cheap right now, or relatively, so when you borrow, you have to paying for your budget on the dollar. So from my perspective, you're doing the right thing. And I, I just like to set expectations. I mean, as attorneys, that's what you ask us to do. Give us uh, kind of an idea of your expectations to wait to what's coming down the road. And that was really what I was trying to do with my presentation. The other evening, I'll be sure. Uh, so please, please accept my apologies if I scared anybody. Uh, but you guys are good hands and you're doing the right thing. Thanks, Dave. Any, any questions on the elementary school and where we're at? Mm. Real quick, um, 
I guess this question's for Dan. Um, do you agree with the assessment then? And is it your recommendation that we move forward and not wait? Yeah, definitely. I mean, keep the door open to potentially not, not award the project should something not work out as planned, but there's no reason to stop. I mean, if, if there was an expectation that money was going to be cheaper long-term or that prices were going to go down long-term or that as Scott and James talked all the, like that, that's a real big issue with the steel. I mean, I mean, speaking personally as somebody who's talked to three of the main general contractors in our region, who've been in touch with, there's only like two or three or four steel joist manufacturers in the region. Um, you, your team's got a really good pulse on things. So, you know, I, I, the process is being handled well. There's no reason to stop, but on this, in the same breath, you know, you keep assessing as you move along and let's see if, if we can deliver as, as intended and get good, good competition and get good numbers that, that, you know, we and you feel good about moving forward with, but yeah, there's no reason to pause whatsoever. Again, you know, we, we, we go through, we do a lot of this and I can tell you a lot of, there's a lot of architects who don't entertain and don't aren't as flexible with, with making all these changes. I mean, it's not a tiny change to, to adjust the structure from bar joists to steel and, um, and, and all the other alternates that Scott ran through. It's, it's just, that's the prudent, you know, the rea you, you want to, you want to be proactive as much as possible. And that, that effort is happening. So sorry for the long winded answer, but yeah, I think you're, you're good. When we had the plan con meeting, I think that was back in February, the formal public hearing um, part of that meeting um, kind of assured the public that we would stay within a certain percentage of the budget that was presented at that meeting. I forget what percentage that was. Can you re please remind me of that and tell me, are we still within that range? Sure. Yep. Um, yeah, it was within 8% of the building costs. Remember um, that excludes the site construction costs. So we are still within that range, but that will definitely be one of the things that we, when we receive bids that will validate um, and advise you if, if you have an issue with, um, with your act for 34 limits, but, but we're still within that range. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great question. Any other thoughts on the elementary school? Okay, I'll touch real, just real briefly um, before I close, touch on the, um, if you'll go to the next slide, Kirk, on the uh, synthetic turf field. So that is currently out to bid. We're receiving bids tomorrow. Um, and um, we have some good bidding coverage on that. Um, so this one, if you recall, this is kind of contingent on receiving all our approvals in time in order to have enough time to construct the project before the fall sports season. So. So really, I think we, I think we, um, you have a, once you, once we receive bids, you have, you'll have a, um, uh, uh, an award to, de to decide and that award should be contingent upon um, receiving those approvals because we anticipate Bethel Township Board of Supervisors approval May 13th, but if that does not occur May 13th, then you will not have enough time to construct that field over the summer. Um, so that is one of the reasons why I want to bring up that 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 approval of the award of bids will be should be contingent upon receiving uh, the the municipal approvals on May 13th. But we have received uh, MPDS uh, permit. That is one of the more lengthy ones to receive. So we should we should uh, be in good shape with that. Any questions on the uh, synthetic turf field bid? Okay, that's, that's all I had this evening. And um, the next time I'll speak with everybody, we'll be out to bid and give, a, give another update. Thank you. Thanks, thanks <laughs> everybody, appreciate that. Thank you all, thank you for the detail and especially for the transparency so that we can plan uh, ahead for what's ahead. Absolutely. And thank you also for adjusting your schedule and getting us out of the way, appreciate that. All right, now we will meet, or I'm sorry, now we will move on um, to the next um, item on the agenda. And that is that we, I have the pleasure of introducing 
um, our school board candidates. So in a couple of weeks, we have the primary election. Four of our school board seats are up for election. And we have um, two of our seated members um, choosing to run again. And we have two um, new candidates um, for school board. And so we've invited them here tonight um, to introduce themselves and to tell you a little bit about why they wish to serve on the school board. And we will begin uh, with Mr. Robert England, Jr. Okay, is that on? Okay, I guess we're good. All right, so when my wife and I moved to this area 23, nearly 23 years ago, we were told that the Northern Lebanon School District was a great place to place our kids. And that advice was pivotal in us landing in Jonestown. Um, so we look back and four kids later, was it good advice? Well, I'm glad you asked. Our oldest is graduating in a few weeks and um, we have a 10th grader, an eighth grader and a sixth grader. And I feel like <clears throat> the Northern Lebanon School District has been a great foundation for them educationally. So I feel like the faculty, the administrators, those who have poured their lives and invested in our children is a, a debt that we've been given as a family. And so one of the reasons I would like to run for board um, is to pay back a small part of that debt that's been given to us. Um, the second reason I'm running is because I feel like all the young scholars in Lebanon, in Northern Lebanon district need to have the opportunity for a great educational foundation. And so I'm excited about the direction that, that we're moving as a district. I feel like things have um, been moving in a positive direction. I would just like to join that effort to, to see that continue. And so that's why I'm here tonight. Thank you for your service and the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to welcome Ms. Kate Kimball Tuzinski to introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kate Kimball Tuzinski, or just Kate. Um, I'm actually a product of the Northern Lemon School System. I graduated in 2002, um, as in my brothers came after me, my cousins came after me. Um, and I actually had a little bit different of, of an experience uh, when my husband and I moved back here in 2018 after 10 years away from the state. I said, we can live temporarily here, but when it's time for Sutton to go to school, I don't want her going to Northern Lebanon. And after I, I, you know, I kept saying that and kept saying that, and I finally asked myself why. What was so wrong about my experience that I didn't want her to come here? Um, and just uh, that critical thinking really caused me to want to be involved early. Um, Sutton, um, uh, I know Robbie has said he's got four in the system. Sutton just turned three. So she's not yet in the system. And so I am running for her future uh, because I, I don't want to say I don't want her to go to Northern Lebanon. I want her to experience the great things that I did here. Um, I'll admit tonight has been a, a bit of a culture shock for me because other than watching my youngest brother star in the musicals, I have not been in this school since 2005. Um, I have not been in here since 2002. Um, and I'm excited to see what Sutton can do in her future and to be a part of a team making the decisions for our students um, and to really participate um, serving in higher education and now serving as an executive assistant who administrates our board. I'm excited to put together both ends of my experience and uh, really serve, serve our students and serve their futures. Thank you. Next we can, I'd like to hear from Mr. Dave Klein. <clears throat> yes, thanks for this opportunity. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Northern Lebanon School District. I went to Jonestown Elementary, and then I graduated high school in 97. Um, currently, I have, currently, I have two children that attend Northern Lebanon, and I have an elementary student and a junior high student. Um, in my spare time, I'm heavily involved in some of the youth sports programs around town, and I've been on the board for a little over four years now. Um, in those past four years, I've certainly learned a lot. I certainly grew um, and I really enjoyed my time on the board. Uh, one of the reasons I'm running is for continuity. 
I feel like it's important for, for experienced board members to stay on if they're enjoying it. Um, it takes a while to get up to speed and learn how, how the system works, how being a good board director works. And uh, I also feel like I do a pretty good job of representing our community. Um, and I look forward to serving for another term and working with the board and seeing out this construction pro project. And uh, yeah, I look, that's it. I look forward to serving uh, another the term as a board director. Thank you, Mr. Klein. And last but certainly not least, we have Ms. Stacy Murray. I am Stacy Murray. Um, I've been on the board a um, little over five years. Um, I have enjoyed my time on the board. Um, there have certainly been a lot of uh, learning opportunities along the way. I've enjoyed uh, serving on the um, IU 13 board as well and have learned a lot. And so I feel that my experience um, as well as my um, social um, service experience background uh, makes me a, a great candidate for advocating for our students and advocating for our community. Um, I am a Northern Lebanon grad. I graduated in 1993. Um, and so I'm glad for the opportunity to uh, continue to serve this community that um, I, I love and has really been a part of my life for its entirety. Um, and so I look forward to serving in this capacity um, again. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Ms. Murray, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I'd just like, on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank all four of you for your commitment, uh, for your dedication to education. We know that um, serving as a board member is a significant time commitment, um, and we appreciate you throwing your hat in the ring um, for Northern Lebanon. All right, moving on to item four, that is our public comment period. Those wishing to make public comment were asked to submit that request by four o'clock this evening via email or online form. Uh, Ms. Martin, am I correct that tonight we do not have any public comment? That's correct. Thank you. The minutes shall note that public notice was given for the meeting in accordance with Act 84 of 1986. Notices and advisements of these meetings will carry the intent that limited business may be conducted on any scheduled meeting date. Now we move on to item six. These are items that are presented to be on the consent calendar next week. Um, first is item 6.1 through 6.3, Dr. Messinger. And, and I, you guys are welcome to stay. You're also welcome to leave if you have better things to do. But uh, it choice is up to you. And I will also say that I'm a little disappointed that as a, a 1987 grad, that I guess I'm the oldest grad in the room from <laughs> Northern London. Um, uh, the first three items under number six are our typical approval of minutes, our student activity account, and our cash disbursements. Any questions on those items? All right, moving on to item seven, items under budget and finance. Yeah, several items here. The first one is our typical LVC clinical experience agreement where we have kids from the college come over and that is more of a, not a student teaching experience, but a, a more of an observation experience. Uh, I, I believe at this point, LVC is, is planning and hoping to be able to uh, send students. We did not uh, have a full range of that this year, but uh, for next year, I, they're, they're certainly hoping to do that. Uh, the item B is the student service agreement between Vista School and NLSD. Uh, you see that every year, um, agreement with them. Item C, item C is the uh, to adopt the proposed final budget. Um, as you know, when uh, Ms. Martin, and she is somewhere on Zoom, uh, the world of Zoom, in case you have questions for her tonight, um, when she presented that budget, it, it, did, uh, it did call for a tax increase that, that uh, our index is 3.8 and the increase was 3.79. Uh, we've certainly talked about uh, the rationale for that um, at, at length. And, uh, but if there are questions about that or if you wanna have a discussion about that, I was asked and it was a good question. Last year we had approved a budget with that with a, a tax increase, but then COVID hit and we had a very good and lengthy discussion about what to do with the circumstances of COVID last year. If you recall where everybody 
spoke and kind of gave their feelings and then we set a percentage. Um, but it, it, tonight would be a good opportunity to uh, to talk about that. If you have feelings about that, if you'd like to see a different number there, um, otherwise it will, will come back with that uh, 3.799, I think it's 7999 um, for next week, which would be the uh, proposed uh, final budget. Uh, and I'll stop and, and let you guys talk about that then if anyone has any questions or comments. Okay, uh, I will keep going then. Uh, the Lebanon County CTC budget is uh, typically to us prior to uh, right about the time we uh, adopt the proposed final budget. Uh, and we have that for you. Uh, Dave, did you have anything from them uh, that passed okay, I guess, and 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 and, uh, and came our way and, and sounded like it went through pretty well, but I, I know that you talked about a project they were doing that's included in there. Was there anything else that you wanted to hit? We're good? Uh, no, L last year, because of COVID, they decided to do a 0%. Um, this year, it's a very modest, increase I, I it's right around three percent um but just like us they have operations and they have to keep up with price of cost of living adjustments and inflation uh nope i have nothing good clarification on that uh, and item E is um, we have some inactive student activity accounts. Um, some have been transferred to other accounts. They are listed there for you uh, that we're currently not using. So we're going to terminate those accounts. Uh, nobody's lost any money and we're not taking it from uh, a, a group to give to a group that's not uh, similar or hasn't taken over similar responsibilities. Uh, but we're going to get clean up some of those activity accounts that have been there and have uh, not been used. Uh, I do want to double check, uh, and we'll do that prior to next meeting to make sure. I think I said annual. We're, the Vista agreement is is just for the remainder of this year. Wanted to make sure I clarify that. Any questions on any of those? Uh, so, Doctor Messinger, the strength and volleyball; those I assume are somewhere else now. Uh, yeah, yes, if we, we now have a volleyball club and, and, and Miss Martin, Leanne, are you there? I am here. Hi. Um, do you yes. know where, do you know exactly where the volleyball uh, funds were transferred to? I do not, but what happened is some of them is like a booster club started and then they kind of left and they tried to use down a lot of the money, but if it was here, I'm not sure where we transferred it to some of the sport ones we kind of transferred around to other athletics that were still using their student activity account, but we can definitely get that information of where exactly it was transferred to. Yeah. And I would ask the same of the strength. I assume that's the weight room. Did you hear that one, Leanne? I did. Yep. I'll look into okay. both of those and find out where why, we why don't we just go through the list then sometime between now and next Tuesday and just say, you know, give them an idea where they went. Thank you. And hide your new car. <laughs> Are there any other questions on these items? And is everyone comfortable with all of them on the consent calendar? All right, moving ahead to item eight, buildings and grounds. Uh, yeah, the first one, I, I'm really happy to be able to work with uh, Fredericksburg Sewer and Water. Um, certainly, they're involved with the building project, too. Uh, they they have had a, a problem. They have um, out on the middle school side of the building, uh, they have a repeater that sends information up to the water tower. And somewhere in between, there have been trees that have grown that now is interrupting their signal. And they were wondering if they could use the, the height of our building to be able to put the repeater in and which would have a clear shot to that. And it's, it's about the size of a shoe box, a bread box. It, uh, we're going to mount it in a closet uh, and it costs us, it does cost us about the cost of a, to run a light bulb for a year. So it's, there is a little bit of a cost, um, but uh uh, this would be to approve uh, the use of our closet for, for that repeater. 
Uh, and the second, uh, the second is about the uh, uh, the bid for the um, uh, the turf field, and certainly, um, as you saw, it would be contingent upon Bethel Township's approval on May 13th, uh, which is two days after our board meeting. It did get through the supervisors meeting, uh, the planning commission meeting. I'm sorry, um, and uh, and has been moved on to the uh, supervisors meeting. I know Chad does not anticipate any issues, uh, and certainly if that amount is something, uh, that is not a project that is going to be impacted by some of the things we've seen. We don't have joists, we don't have steel beams. We're just talking about the turf at this point. Uh, there is some fencing. Uh, but certainly if that is a higher amount, you know, we can always move that to a discussion. I don't know what we're anticipating, uh, but right now we have quite a, we have a good number of, uh, of, of people that we believe are bidding and we'll find out in a couple of days uh, what that looks like and then we'll bring the, bring that to you. Are there any questions on those items? clarify on the turf field. So if if the price is higher than what we had anticipated, there would, could be some more discussion about that. Am I clear? Absolutely. And and that I think is what Dan was saying too, even with the building. You know, if we go out to bid and those bids don't come in, a, in a, an amount that we're comfortable with, you reject the bids, okay. you know, and you you wait, you you make adjustments, you, whatever, whatever we decide to grow, you know, to, with the direction to go at that point, but to go to bid, well, with the turf field, it's already at bid. So we're going to get numbers and see where they are, but the same thing will apply with the building too. Okay. I think that's what the point Dan was trying to make earlier. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Yep. Yeah. I just, um, I, I just looking at that field um, this past week and the usage of that field. I mean, we have some of our, rec leagues that are utilizing where I think that turf field is going to be. And so, um, you know, I'm just thinking about, um, you know, what maybe additional discussions have gone on as far as the use of that field, because right now I'm seeing it used somewhat for high school and, you know, somewhat for the rec. So I'm just absolutely about those rec leagues. <laughs> we anticipated, um, you know, the, the rec leagues continuing, it, it should be a, a benefit for them. And ultimately okay. there'll be lights, which, you know, in the, in the fall, and we'll have to talk about, you know, can they contribute to fees and things like that. But in the fall, when it's getting dark at 630 and mm -hmm. it's really, really tough for our soccer programs uh, to be able, and, and football, uh, to be able to practice late at night, a, a, a tremendous asset for them to be able to turn on lights and get on that turf field all kinds of weather. Uh, there's a, there's a, if you recall, there'll be a main field, but there'll also be a practice field to the right of it. Uh, if you're looking from the building, um, I've, I've learned a little bit about this as we've gone through. Evidently they make paint that can go on for three months or it can go on for a day and be taken off. So we can paint it specifically for our, our programs to practice or for youth programs to be able to use. Uh, which gives us some flexibility there too. So I think it'll be a, an asset for our youth programs. Okay. And in the spring, we don't use that very often. Okay. You know, okay. it's really don't use it at all in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And just to be clear, if, uh, if for whatever reason the bids are too high and we reject all of them due to the timing, that essentially means that we're putting this off for a year, probably. The turf field would have to be put off. If right. we don't get the turf field started by June, it won't be finished in time for the fall season. Yeah. Okay. And that's really just the, the field and some fencing. I mean, there's some things that go along with it, but we're not touching the concession stand yet. Any other questions? Moving on to item nine, our extracurricular items. Uh, Ten point one is final adoption of uh, 80, policy 801, 802, 803, and 813. Uh, Ten point two is the tentative adoption, the first reading of policy 805, 805.1, 805.2, and 807. Uh, Ten point three is the retirement of policy 540. Uh, it is now covered in policy 813. 
and 10.4. We have two revisions um, for uh, curriculum. And I just wanted to clarify what a revision means. And I'll give you an example. And I had a good question that um, I, I, I thought you'd all benefit from. For instance, the health curriculum, the, the, they, it has been determined as we've taught this particular class that the uh, unit on CPR and first aid was longer than what uh, is, was needed. And so they reduced that amount of time and then they picked up two, two other topics uh, to insert into, do you remember what those two were? Lymphatic, Lymphatic and respiratory systems. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they, 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 they adjusted based on the time needed and then added those two concepts. So the curriculum didn't change. I mean, a lot of times these revisions aren't changing very much, uh, but just to be clear that these are revisions. These are not, um, from scratch courses. We already have these courses, we just have revised them. And this would be the tentative adoption of those. And 10.5 would be the uh, um, uh, high school award a high school diploma for each of the 153 seniors pending their completion of all graduation requirements. I believe there's a few people in this room that have people on that list. <laughs> We're praying. <laughs> <laughs> any questions on any of those gary could you explain what the revision to the english 10 curriculum was i was interested in that uh i'd i honestly we would have to get the the teacher to uh to go through that it goes through uh, the the teacher department chair the, those guys take a, a look at that but the actual specifics um while brad and i look at them um i would need them to to give us that. I will get that information and I can send that out. I, I can actually send out the health as well. So That'd be great. But out. this is an existing class. It's existing yes, curriculum. yes, yes. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, we're gonna take a step back and go back to extracurriculum. Nine, I don't, we didn't cover nine, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that at the top of the page. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have a couple of trips. One, uh, one is uh, at, at the environmental science class as part of their educational experience. Typically, it goes to Delaware Bay. Typically, that is a night trip, overnight trip. Uh, we are not doing overnight this year, um, but they are going to go up and come back. Uh, and then uh, you heard last uh, week the um, uh, presentation on the... Uh, uh, the uh, family and consumer science trip uh, from Mrs. Fry, uh, and that trip is on there. That would be for uh, 2022. Uh, and then also, I, I talked to you in an email about the agreement between Varsity Brands and sent you an example of the branding guide. Um, if you paid any attention to that, it, it comes out with a really uh, neat product to the point where we would have very specific colors um, there's a, a, a color number that gets associated with it. Those colors then would be used as we do jerseys, as we do, um, you know, banners and things like that. Uh, they're going to take a look at our mascot. As you know, we use the Minnesota Vikings Viking right now. No, we don't. No, I'm sorry. Oh, we don't. We use, we, we, we use one that looks one. very similar. Very similar. The beard is slightly different. Um, apologize for that. Uh, uh, so they're going to look at that. They're going to look at uh, some um, uh, some uh, fonts for different uh, our different wording Vikings, and 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 we'll come out of that with a whole branding guide that can be used for our athletic programs, can be used for our, our booster clubs, can be used for our youth sports to use um, our PTOs, and so uh, really exciting and long overdue. And I know Mrs. Sell will be smiling because when when I took. When she right before she left, she said, "Please get this done. It's the one thing I want you to do." <laughs> and so um, we're working on that. And then, so that agreement would be uh, uh, on there as well. Any questions on those items? But yeah. Sorry. Engaging That's the <laughs> I sometimes am honest to a fault. <laughs> Moving on to item 11, human relations. Okay, uh, we have 11.1. Uh, 
uh, improve the, we have a, an employment of a professional substitute listed there. Um, 11.2 is a leave request, an unpaid leave for a, a teacher at Jonestown Elementary. Uh, item three, it's that time of year where we have some folks leaving and, and retiring and uh, we'll celebrate them before they go, but uh, a few folks that uh, we are going to miss terribly. Um, I, 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 I will say that uh, um, we've, we've already started to look for replacements, but they're going to be irreplaceable, irreplaceable in terms of their, what they've brought to Northern Lebanon. 11.4. Um, there are two requests for professional leaves uh, for you uh, there. Um, 11.5 is a uh, to be determined uh, Act 93. We need to determine the uh, base raise for Act 93. We also, uh, with 11.6, need to determine the base raise for our classified personnel. 11.7, um, um, we need a board treasurer. Uh, our board treasurer will be uh, not running. And uh, so therefore we need someone to, to be board treasurer. So we're going to need a volunteer for that, for the agenda for next week. Unless anyone wants to, that really makes them excited and they want to volunteer to look at checks and want to do that now. <laughs> Holler if you want to do that. Uh, and we also, our board secretary is up and uh, I, I would recommend the election of Mrs. Martin for uh, board secretary who currently holds that position if, if uh, there are no objections to that. Um, so uh, it, I'll open it up to you guys in terms of secretary and treasurer. Any comments or thoughts on that? Would we uh, take nominations next week then too? We, we certainly can. We would move it probably to discussion then at that point if yeah. we do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm prepared to make a nomination tonight, um, but I don't know if it's appropriate to do it tonight or next week. You want to weigh in on it? You can make a recommendation. Okay. Well, I'd recommend Director Marlowe for the position of treasurer. Are there any other questions on those items? Item 12 is an informational item. Um, item 13 is new business. Is there any new business for discussion this evening? If I could make a, just a comment on back on the building side on what we were, what we were talking about. I know, um, you know, the, the worry of, of costs going up. I mean, we're certainly seeing that in many things already, um, business world, et cetera. And, and I think the comment that I heard, which I would echo is, we're not gonna see these costs come back down anytime soon. Um, you know, probably best case, they might start to flatten out, my opinion, probably in about two years. I mean, we're seeing just massive changes in pricing. The labor adjustments that are happening right now, um, those as well, I mean, they're going to continue to go up and we, and, and that's going to drive some of these other costs long-term up. So, you know, if we get bids back and they're, they're fairly acceptable, they're within our range, um, you know, I think it's prudent to continue to move forward because, you know, a simple inflation of 3% on this project, and we're talking 1.5 million our annual savings, we've already said is somewhere neighborhood of 1.8. So the sooner we get some of those things started and moving forward, um, the better off we are. And, and, and that inflation of 3% might not be what we see. We might see something far greater than that. So as that comes back, hopefully we do, it does come back within kind of the guidelines we set. But um, I think what we're seeing it, it, unless it's terribly out of whack, we should consider moving forward with it. I think just to echo that, we also looked at numbers to fix current buildings, which were actually higher than 
building a new building. So I think watch, you know, seeing that money go into a new building versus into old dilapidated buildings that we just, we don't need to fix, I think is also something to keep in mind. I agree. Yeah, and the borrowing costs right now as well. I mean, that that is this economic situation changes here. I mean, we could see that shift and, and the cost of money right now, what, what we we're looking at right now, I mean, it's, yeah, it's unheard of. Um, a, a small change in that wipes out, you know, savings we get by waiting and, and hoping that some of the material costs will flatten or come down. Yeah. It, it, the, you know, the factor of the savings for the building um, in terms of personnel uh, is, is something that we, it, you forget about that a little bit. Um, we've already begun that. I've asked Leanne actually to start keeping track and presenting it then annually. Uh, we had one retirement this year at the elementary level uh, in the classroom. We did have a music, but we're replacing that one. Um, but at the, at the, in the classroom level, we had a retirement. We were able to, to not replace that position. So we're reducing staff by, by that person for now, um, you know, certainly as other people retire, um, it, we're going to look for ways to continue to reduce so that two years from now we're in a, a good position moving over there. Um, uh, but we've already started looking at positions and uh, I, I, there's, there's quite a few positions that we'll be able to redo. And I, I'm very confident in that number of 1.8 to 2.1 million in terms of savings. And I think that that 1.8, um, I might be a broken record on this, but that is a flat number. You know, I know we modeled that out like 10 years, but if you if we didn't do that, that 1.8 really every year just continues to go up with you know uh, all the benefits, et cetera. And um, and so the sooner we get that started, the sooner that savings is real. I know we're not we're not doing anything in terms of of cuts. It's we're we're going to let attrition. Um, really take this, which I think is the right way. But, but that is, um, yeah. If we delay, then we're delaying. We're delaying that as well. Well, and I, I will just add. I, I, we talked very briefly about, and the board understands. I think that you know we talked about the the K to six uh, V three virtual teachers. Um, due to class sizes, we were able to transition two people into those positions without hiring. Um, you know, and, and there's still potential for people to leave and, uh, and, and we do have a position available that we may need to replace and that's fine. Um, but just those two moves, I mean, I, I know this year is a different year, but to give you a conservative number, it's over $150,000 that we've paid for V3 teachers outside of the school day. So by moving two people um, and then not having to pay outside of the school day, that 150000 um, that's also a savings for us. Um, and I think actually improves greatly our product for K to six uh, V3 students because they will have that synchronous opportunity every single day with those teachers. So, Yeah, and not to make it all about doing this for the money piece, it is, it is about the long-term goal of educating the kids, right? So the sooner we get the project moving, the sooner we move on that, the sooner we save um, save tax dollars, et cetera. Thank you, Director Marlowe. I wholeheartedly agree with the points that you've made. Any other comments or new business? May I have a motion to adjourn? May I have okay. a second? Is there any discussion? This is a unanimous roll call vote. Your vote will be recorded in the affirmative unless you say nay or I abstain. The motion has passed. This meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone.